Hey guys, so today we're going to solve the problem reversing a queue using recursion. So the question is given a queue, write a recursive function to reverse it. Okay. So, so basically what a queue is, basically, well, they ha it has two operations, NQ and DQ. So, so suppose you're standing in a line, right? When you stand in a line, the f uh, you're standing in a straight line, like one, two, three, four, five, six. This is the order in which you're standing. And you want to take a ticket for a movie. So the very first person who gets the ticket is this person number one because he's standing in the line first. He entered the row first. That's why he's getting it first. Okay. So that's the sequence of sequence of, you know, Q, which is first and first out. If the first person, if eight enters the row after seven, so then it will always do get his ticket after seven unless and until seven gets it, he won't get it. So that's basically what's the property of a Q. Okay. And what happens in a queue is basically you can add elements to the rear of the queue. So if I can add an element over here, five, something like this. Okay. So this is called enqueuing in a queue. But when you remove an element, so it's a first and first out principle. The very first element which is entered, which is four, that will be the first element that's get, that gets removed from it when we pop it. So this will be the very first element that gets removed. So this is called dequeuing from a queue. Okay, so these are the two properties which we need to take, take, uh, take care of when we solve this problem. Okay, so now how are we going to solve the problem is basically let me just code this out first and I'll explain the code to you guys. So what we'll do is we'll create a reverse function. Reverse Q. So if Q is equal to empty return so val is equal to q dot pop zero if q not equal to empty q dot reverse q then q is equal to put rev so this is a function which will be creating q comma val and then return Q. Okay. So def but rev Q comma val so Q dot append val and return Q. So let's just print this out reverse of Q. So let's see this okay q is equal to q reverse of q so let's check this out so yeah six two ten one three four all right so this is basically the code of it so now let me explain you what's happening over here Okay, so this is our question. So we have four, three, one, ten, two, and six. Ten, two, and six. The very first step is we're checking if the queue is empty or not. And if the queue is not empty, what we're doing is we're popping the very first element of the queue. Okay, so in this step, when we pop the element, we'll get four as the value. So because we're storing the popped element in a variable, uh, in a variable called val. So we, here we'll get the popped element as four. And again, we'll be checking if the queue is not empty. If the queue is not empty, then we'll again do a recursive call on it. And we'll keep on popping the elements. So what will happen over here is the very first step, we'll get this, this linked list will, sorry, not linked list, this queue will be going to the recursive, recursive call. Okay. So this will be going into this recursive call over here. Okay. Now when this goes in the recursive call, we we'll go to these steps again, go through these steps again. And on going through these steps, we again pop the very first element on with popping the very first element. What we do is we get three over here. Okay. And then we pass on this queue to the recursive call of this one, this and this steps recursive call over here. So these 
elements are passed. Now, when these elements are passed, again, these four steps again happen. And when these four steps happen, sorry. So when these four steps happen, we get one popped out and stored in a variable. Okay. Now, similarly, it happens for 10, 2, and 6. So 10, 2, and 6. So when we pop it, we'll get 10 over here. Then we get a 2 and 6. Now the variable stored over here will be 2. And here the variable stored will be 6. Okay. Now when we reach 6, what we get is the variable popped is equal to 6. Okay. When we reach 6, what we do is we do this step now. Okay, now we are over here at 6's step where val q.pop. Now 6 is popped from the list. Since this is the last one, well, 6 was the only element present. Now 6 is popped and we get a variable 6 stored over here. Val equal to 6. Okay, now when we check this step, if q is not equal to empty, it is empty now because q, 6 is popped from it. Okay, and now when 6 is popped, we do this step. Okay, now what this step does is put rev as a function in which we'll just basically keep on appending the elements to the queue. Okay, so let's, let's, you know, split screen over here. And, okay. Now what put rev will do is basically now queue is empty. So this queue we have is empty right now. And we have a val. We're passing both of them. Now the current val is six. Okay, now six, since six is the current val, and when we do a put rev, then this q will be equal to q dot append val, which is equal to six. Now, yeah. So and we just return the q. Then what we return is this list with the value six. Now this q is equal to six, and then we just return the q. Then we return the q. We return it back to this step, okay? Which is var a variable equal to two. And okay, we just return back to this step where the val is equal to two. Okay, now this step is already completed. If q is not equal to empty, then reverse q. Okay, in this step, what we did was we sent it back to the queue where we got only six present in the list and we removed that. Okay, so this step is completed. Okay, and now what we do is we have a q equal to six. Okay, and we do a put rev of val q and val on it. Now we do a put rev of q and val on it. So six is currently present in it. We'll just append two to it, which is the current val, and return the list. Okay, like this. Then we return the list. We were at this step. Now the list is present, returned. And so we get this list, six and two, as q here right now, and we just return this q back. Now we return this q. Uh, yeah, so when we return this q, we go back to this step. Okay, now in this step again, these first uh, you know line five to line ten steps are already completed. Okay, and we go to this step now. So q is equal to put ref q comma val. Now currently the q is six and two, and we just append the val. Current val is ten, so we append ten to it, and so we append six two and then ten, and we just return the q. So this is returned over here, which is in turn over here. This queue is equal to six, two, and ten, which is returned back. Returned back. Then we return this queue back. Again, the same thing happens. We go back to one. Again, the steps five and are complete in this step as well. So we have six, two, ten, and then one. Now, similarly, what happens is for three, we go to this queue. We finish up five to ten. We see. That the current queue is 6 to 10 and 1. We just append it over here, 3, and we get the current queue as 6, 2, 10, 1, 3. Okay, and then we just return this queue. We get we return it over here. Now this queue is again returned back, and we return this queue back. We go to the very first step and the in which we have you know the four as the variable we complete steps five to ten now we just have to finish this step in which we just get the current queue which is six to ten one and three 
and we append a 4 to it, the current val, which is present. 6, 2, 10, 1, and 3. And finally, the appended value, which is 4. So, yeah. So basically, and after that, the queue gets returned over here. This is the queue which is returned. We return this queue back. And in the end, since nothing is left, we return this as the output of the answer and which is the reverse of the queue. Okay. So yeah, guys, so that's all for today's video. And if you like the video, please do like, share and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks.